next module is on biodiversity yeah already we studied what is environment ecology biotic abiotic factor and biodiversity so variety of life on earth and this is a product of evolution of 4 billion years and we are rapidly destroying it right how it is measured species diversity genetic diversity and variety of ecosystem what is species diversity number of species yeah it can be human being tiger elephant so if you do this kind of pictorial representation they will understand easily what is genetic diversity this sir does not look like this i do not look like aishwarya rai why because we have got different genes yeah ecosystem diversity we already studied yeah varieties of ecosystem in particular habitat area domesticated diversity so it is more to do with agro biodiversity which are like crops which we are already using livestock diversity and crop diversity okay india had 50000 varieties of rice and navadanya yesterday vandana shivas institute which we were talking about they have identified 150 species rice in western ghat now initially we had many varieties only in western ghats tribal people in uh, like warli tribes in maharashtra uh, they have knowledge and of which species can be grown in which climatic condition so they grow different varieties of rice in different seasons okay india's eight breed of buffaloes represent the entire genetic diversity of the world uh, and anybody has visited that biodiversity train uh, by ce it it came to all cities who great uh, which city you uh, you are trichy what about you 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 also visited no miras miras oh good so it had come to kaimatur also it went it was very nicely they had displayed biodiversity of entire india of different biogeographical zone i don't know whether it will come again or not but in if in case if it comes please visit okay it, there are different indices like species richness talks about only number how many number of species are there and simpson uh, like shannon and simpson there are different uh, measures to measure this diversity indices uh, simpson index takes care of number as well as evenness how evenly it is distributed total number of species is still not known okay some scientists say it is 10 million some say 30 million so it is around 10 to 30 million the number of described species described means those who are identified and written are 1.8 million majority of them are microbes and insects it has taken 4 billion years to develop this biodiversity to evolve through evolution and there were five mass extinctions but all they were natural see extinction and evolution is a natural process we have studied this right in 7th 8th standard that how evolution takes place extinction <coughs> lamarck's theory different theories we have studied okay so it is a natural process but now what is happening it is becoming man made thousand times rate has increased so sixth mass extinction will be man made because of our activities okay india why it is rich country not only because of gdp but it has got 80% of world's biodiversity in just 2% of earth's surface diverse ecosystem and climatic condition we have from north to south if you see or east to west we have got 16 major types forest types 21% of the area is under forest we are one of the 17 mega diverse countries in the world we have two biodiversity hotspots one is in northeast and another is western ghat they are origin of 30000 cultivated plants our country uh, and we have got high endemicity what is endemicity confined to a particular area I means suppose if tiger is endemic to i am not telling it is endemic to india suppose endemic to india means it is found only in that region okay if nilgiri thar is endemic to western ghat means it is found only in western ghats and when it is endemic to that particular area what happens it becomes vulnerable because if something happens to that area it's gone and gone means gone for ever 
Okay, this is about uh, agrobiodiversity. We had 50,000 varieties of rice, 1,000 mangoes, sorghum and pepper. All the world's buffalo breed are found in India. Okay, and that uh, red jungle fowl picture you saw in today's movie. Yeah? That is a wild variety of all poultry breeds. Okay. So this is some figures about India's biodiversity. You can tell students that we have got 91,000 plus species of animals. Highest is insect and more than 45,000 species of plants. Yeah, we have got endemism rich area that is northeast, northwest and eastern Himalayas as well as western Ghats. Okay. We have got 11,000 plants which are endemic to India, 55 birds, 214 reptiles. What does this mean? These 55 birds are found only in India, they are not found in any other region. Out of total fishes or amphibians found in India, this percentage is endemic to India. I mean, suppose a certain number out of that 47 percent of the reptiles are found only in India. Medicinal plants, we have got 8000 medicinal plants and we are using them in 50,000 herbal formula. Yeah? And it is a major source of livelihood for many people because they go and collect this. Either they go and collect from forest or it is also artificially cultivated. I already told two biodiversity hotspots that is Northeast India and Western Ghats. And there are certain criteria for like uh, to give the status to that area as a biodiversity hotspots. They have to have more than, they must support 1500 endemic species. They should support species also that region should be uh, having threat. So it, that need of conservation should be there. We have got 25 hotspots all over the world. Yeah, Western Ghats. See, uh, here I have given more information about Western Ghats because we, where I teach, we are nearby Western Ghats. Our university comes under that area. So, uh, it is always good to talk to uh, students so that they can relate in a better way. When they are in from that area, they can go see that. Also, I told you about that exercise, you know, newspaper cutting. We tell them that what is happening around you, that is more important than just studying India has this many spaces and world has that many spaces, but what is happening in your local area. And it is not uh, bad to know about what is happening globally also. So they get current news from newspaper. So please make this habit that they read newspaper, they cut articles and they make presentation. So uh, somebody was telling that what this EVS we are learning from third standard, fifth standard, like that students say, right? Yes. So when you give them this exercise, believe me that you will also learn a lot from that because you don't get time to read newspaper on daily basis and you can't read all the newspaper. Even from internet, they can get some news. So tell them that two, three months, you please read newspaper, get all the cuttings and wonderful news they will cut. Tell them to not only cut because they will just cut and paste and give you. Tell them to read and make presentation. And whenever they, you get time, like 5-10 minutes presentation if they make, you will not believe me, but your knowledge bank also will be enhanced like anything. You will understand so many issues what is happening around you. And that is how I think one should learn EVS. It should not be just based on some textbooks. So uh, here I have given some data about Western Ghats. You can find out your own region. Western Ghat also is significant because it is one of the biodiversity hotspots in India. Uh, we have got 15,000 Asian elephants. We have got diverse ecosystem. I showed few of the ecosystem pictures. We also saw one film. This is again endemism in Western Ghat. Okay, yesterday uh, Dr. Patha spoke about this. Madhav Gargil got some prize and all, you know. Uh, unfortunately, that's what I was telling, though we have got wonderful laws, previous government had appointed Madhav Gadgil committee and he came out with an excellent report on Western Ghat conservation plan. But politicians with vested interest, not only politicians, people, those who wanted to, uh, you know, have resorts in Nilgiris, in wildlife corridor, uh, in near Uti, there are many wildlife corridors. <laughs> Masanagudi, yeah, yeah. And uh, they wanted to do plantations and tea business, that business. They, they opposed that report. And they are spreading such a false news, you know. That report says that 
people should go for eco-friendly buildings. They should not uh, extract too much natural resources and they should go for green buildings. So how they are interpreting that you know that this report is very bad. We do not have even freedom to paint like whatever color we want. We have to paint our buildings with green color. So that kind of false propaganda is done and finally government was forced to dilute that report by he had declared certain areas as eco sensitive area where certain activities you cannot do. But it was not against development at all, certain activities were, were permitted. But uh, as you know they do lots of false propaganda and say that this is anti-development and this is like anti-poor and anti-farmers and anti-something. It is anti some vested interests of like corporates like resorts and uh, some huge landowners who wants to do coffee plantation and in the reserve forest or protected forest. Okay. So usually people do not understand, they do not are not worried about long term benefit of environment, they are just worried about whether my land is going or not, what is happening and there was a strong opposition in several states and then they diluted that report and that was published by, there was another committee, Kasturi Rangan and very, very, very interestingly still that committee report <coughs> also is not implemented. Again there is opposition for that report also. So you were asking me solutions, what solution I can tell you, I also do not know. <laughs> so this is what is happening but then still we have to be positive, we have to generate awareness. This is all happening because of lack of awareness, right. This is a, a state animal of Tamil Nadu endangered we saw today in film, this Nilgiri Thar, this Western Ghat. You can tell your students to do diversity, of course you need expert. This publication we did of our campus diversity involving students, I will talk about that later. This is again Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve, this is the first biosphere reserve in India. We are again part of that, so I am giving more emphasis on that. You can identify Nilgiri uh, Thar and Lionel Macaw, both they are endangered, means endangered means about to go for extinction okay and unless they are protected and also they are endemic to the area. So they are so important so we have to conserve their habitat. Yeah this is we have already studied biodiversity provides us food security, water, climate regulation, every species has its own role to play in the ecosystem yeah. Every single species is an integral part of the vast chain of life. Many species are used as food, fiber, medicine, resources already we studied. Here I want to stress uh, on 25 percent of all our drugs come from plants. Many that like vinca is treated for vinca rosia you know that sadapuli we call in Marathi, sarpagandha uh, is uh, many 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 plants are uh, used in a medicine even in allopathy. Uh, yeah. Many, many plants, name it or most of the plants has got some or other medicinal property. Commercially also they have been used, Sarpaganda in that uh, blood pressure medicine, uh, that reserpine and all they are using plus Vinca is used in cancer. Okay, why should we conserve biodiversity? Because economic value, it gives us food, fiber, medicine, all the ecosystem services what we studied all the resources, agricultural, uh, many wild crops are also coming from the wild variety. Second, why should we conserve? I told that this is not my earth alone, okay. Uh, when I was small, uh, my grandfather used to sing one Marathi song. Uh, there are how many Marathis are there? Okay, uh, he used to tell me that Moti Manto Mazegar, Manimao Mante Mazegar, Pal Mante Mazegar, Pal Mante Mazegar, Vinsu Manto Mazegar, Pal Mante Mazegar, Vinsu Mante Mazegar, Egar Konache. It is like uh, dog also says it is my house, Manimao is uh, cat also says it is my house, lizard is telling it is my house, scorpion is telling it is my house, rat is also telling it is my house. And Pinky is also telling my house, Pinky is the smallest daughter of the, uh, so it is whose house? 
So it is everyone's house. So that time he uh, described about uh, urban biodiversity, which I'm re relating that to now. So this is everyone's house, right? So we can't say it is my house and everyone has equal right to live on this planet as of mine. That is ethical value. They tell man-animal conflict. They say that leopard is coming to your house, uh, encroaching in the Sanjay Gandhi National Park. Elephants problem in Tamil Nadu, many places, okay, elephant raiding. Yeah, Koimatur, it comes. Why it is coming? Why it is coming to Because we have destroyed their habitat, they don't have enough prey. That is why if you can encroach their home, it is bound to happen, you know, they will also come to your home. They are not coming to get any degrees and all, <laughs> jokes apart, okay. Because you are encroaching in their home, they don't have enough food, they don't know where to go, so they are coming. So who is culprit? We. Yeah. So this species, you see, this is already extinct. How many species are extinct in India? Any one or two? Indian cheetah is no more. Okay. Pink headed duck is no more. So the species once is gone is gone. You cannot bring it back. I told you that we are not having, though we think that we have got superior technology, we don't have any superior lab where we can produce one animal or okay it is extinct. Yes, there is some technology but for that also you need to have that one cell we have to take from human being. We cannot have clone otherwise. Okay. So what we cannot create, we don't have any right to destroy. And once it is gone, it is gone, it is not going to come. We have already lost, I have already described this slide, you remember that natural rate of extinction is one species per, per year and present rate is one species per hour, per year, per hour. Okay, somebody asked me what is this living planet index? Living planet index is a report by WWF, a world, what is WWF? World. Fund for nature, not that wrestling wala. Okay. So they have measured uh, only vertebrates. I told you that in measuring invertebrate is very difficult, insects. They have measured only vertebrate population from 1970 and they have found out that 52% decline is there. So living planet index is nothing but a report by WWF. Uh, which is a biennial publication and which documents changing state of the biodiversity ecosystem and humans demand on natural resources. So that report says that there is a decline of 52 percent. See terrestrial species 39, 76, freshwater and marine species 39 already gone. And reason we already studied agriculture, urban development, energy production, habitat loss, Invasive species, yeah. steepest decline is in tropics and uh, oh, south, southern Asia where we have lost marine turtles and sharks and migratory seabirds. See biodiversity is declining in both temperate and tropical region but more decline is in tropics. Again reasons I told already habitat loss and degradation due to exploitation for hunting and fishing and developmental activities and climate change. Why climate change is affecting this biodiversity? How it can affect? Agriculture will affect, uh, I am talking about animal life. It is affecting plants, animals because animals are used to stay in certain climatic condition, in certain temperature, in certain habitats. Okay, these are the shrinking uh, ranges of tiger. You can see that dark brown is historical range and current range is only that <coughs> you alone. Yeah, already I told you cheetah is extinct, pink headed duck is extinct. There is one interesting uh, deer called dancing deer in Manipal. Uh, because Manipal lake there are many islands, okay. Uh, islands are made up of that fumidity some kind of plant, okay. And when that deer is on that island, since that island is floating, it, it looks like a dancing, dancing deer. That is why its name is dancing deer. No, it is there, but it is disappearing. It is endangered because its habitat is destroyed. And this dancing deer is still there? <coughs> okay. Okay. 
yeah but its natural habitat is manipur i don't know kanha whether it is okay okay thank you so we have uh, in india what is happening 10% of the plants 20% of mammal and 5% birds are already threatened means they are about to get extinct so unless we save their habitat or take some measures they also we can lose them also so 150 medicinal plants have already disappeared this is the endangered indian wildlife if we do not take care it can disappear so you can see white backed vulture lantern macaque sarus crane siberian crane uh, there you can see lion tiger yeah okay and reasons we all know over exploitation we also saw that in film yeah deforestation mining pollution habitat fragmentation wildlife corridor destruction because that is the only way that they can travel from one fragment to another patch so conservation of wildlife corridor is very critical this is about that one green corridor in okay biodiversity loss we already discussed about lantana and mycenia yeah global warming now already 1700 plants and animals and insect species have moved towards pole world why they are moving towards pole world temperature rise very good there is a mass death of coral because of temperature rise and pollution many people are thinking that global warming is truth or myth already we are sinking lochara island in sundarban disappeared many islands are going down in the water hum kab jagenge ha we are still thinking global warming is truth or myth yeah though we know that many of the areas are have already gone under the water this i have already discussed if, during my first lecture that penguin population has shrunk because ice is melting in antarctica 90% of the large fishes have disappeared many species like golden toad and other one more frog uh, in costa rica is already disappeared in a, which is a directly due to global warming direct result of global warming man animal conflict we just discussed uh bharatpur case i will just tell you bharatpur uh, is a artificial man made wetland and many migratory birds they come visit that area periodically periodically means during winter season uh, but suddenly that uh, water uh, level had gone down in that park and they st stopped coming so instead of taking community into the confidence forest officers banned community going inside the reserve and they made some arrangement for water there and a community's access to that reserve was denied because of that what happened now there was a big riot and violence happened so again i want to tell you and even sariska's example he gave yesterday uh, you remember partha dr partha gave sariska's example that when people were not taken into consideration tigers they thought that if you isolate people from that area they can protect tiger but all tigers have already disappeared from that area the major thing is other than habitat loss what is the reason any any idea why these species are disappearing wildlife yeah the reason is the uh, man and wildlife conflict is there second part is there some officers are also involved at that time okay the case that uh, they itself they killing some tigers and they selling them here into international market through yeah. mafia yeah. so that one is also yeah, yeah, reason yeah, yeah, yeah. i agree with you that there are some good officers there are some bad officers few people are really doing good work few people for some sh uh, small interest what happened actually in sariska this is a tiger reserve one of the tiger reserve and in this tiger reserve forest department is claiming that they have 400 tigers in the that tiger reserve but when a team from moef visited the tiger reserve they found that none of the tiger in the tiger reserve all the tigers have been posed by a notorious poacher known as sansar chand he is a notorious poacher in our country and now he have been arrested uh, two years back i think and sansar chand and later on the forest department have introduced tigers from the ranthambore tiger reserve from uh, to explore them in the sariska tiger reserve now okay fine so i was telling this story that i was working with wwf and they told that some poaching is happening 
and then we thought that we will do some sting operation. Um, Bhavani Sagar, our office was there. So they told me that you have short hair and all. So you become some Sri Lankan or some like, no, not Indian, okay. And we went and you don't know any other language, you know only English. And we went like that and uh, surprisingly I found that uh, they came and they showed us leopard skin and all this. And they all used to talk English, well dressed. They are not from local community, all college going boys. And they asked uh, that if you need more, we can show you more. And then I asked, how can you do this? So they say they poison buffalo and they keep there and then the tiger or leopard come and eat that poisoned buffalo. So it is not that indigenous community is doing anything, but it is like external factors also are responsible for that. And I also know that many people like, you know, those who are staying inside the forest, we really don't have to teach them to conserve biodiversity. They know they are, we are worshipping all these animals from long time. They know importance. They also, if you properly guide them, they help us, they help you in protecting that area from poachers. And even few poachers were converted back as a forest guards. So it is always better to involve community while conserving and forest. Say that uh, when Virapan was there, he was the only poacher. Yeah, yeah. Now there are many poachers. When Virapan was the there, only elephants, male elephants had problem. But forest is conserved very well because of his fear. No other disturbance was there. <laughs> I am just informing. I heard that uh, people, they are putting uh, current in water source. And animals then, uh, when they are coming to drink water, they die due to current. Yeah, yeah. So See, what happens, happening. you know, like, no, now uh, farmers are very desperate, okay. Now they have got agricultural land inside the reserve forest. So near or nearby forest. So what happens, these animals come there and they do crop raiding. You cannot completely blame farmers also. So they do not put, I don't know water, but they do electric fencing. But you are supposed to put very light current, but they put very high voltage and sometimes animals can die. Okay, but there is some good news. In Nepal, no tiger poaching is reported from last three years. So I just wanted to tell you that traditionally we used to worship animals. All you see Nagadevata and uh, peacock is uh, Vahan of whom? Kartika. Kartika, eagle, uh, rat. Uh, is associated with uh, Ganesha and cow we used to worship, this Vatavruksha Puja, sacred grooves, there are many sacred grooves, Kerala people and not only Kerala, every, everywhere, even in Maharashtra we call Devrai, yeah. So they used to conserve that forest, it used to act as a genetic pool, okay. It is a God's forest, so you are not supposed to cut that forest. Buddhism and Gandhism. They talk about in USL brotherhood and Bishnoi community. We already discussed yesterday, Chipko moment. Yeah, this all deers, they go very near to people because they are so friendly with them. They know that people are not going to harm them. Ashoka had many animal hospitals. Again, same thing I want to tell that no development is sustainable without taking care of nature. There are international and national conventions and laws, okay, biodiversity convention where it's, it, it says that equitable <coughs> sharing of benefit and conservation of biological resources. There is a convention for conservation of wetlands, Ramsar convention, yeah. 25 sites have been designated as Ramsar sites. There are many other conventions. We have got Indian Forest Act. Environmental Protection Act, Forest Conservation Act, Fisheries, Fisheries Wildlife Protection, Biodiversity Act, Coastal Zone. Yeah, Coastal Zone Regulation Act, that is a very important act, you have to leave certain distance, but if you go and see in most of the coastal areas, implementation is not happening. If we have law and if it are not getting implemented, what is the use of that law? And then now responsibility lies with us. Suppose if somebody is doing publicly something illegal, okay. Unless you and me question, okay, suppose if somebody is building in CRZ area, unless you question, nobody is going to 
government is not going to see that oh this person has done something illegal here so it is our responsibility as public to keep watch in our area and if you cannot do at least there are some NGOs who file this public interest litigation help them at least give them information yeah yeah we already discussed about chipko movement silent valley movement who saved kerala shastra sahitya parishan yesterday he discussed now there is one more dam it is still under discussion puyam kotti hydroelectric project it had come to selimani center for environmental impact assessment and the way they had written report these people did not like because it was going against them so they gave it to another agency environmental impact assessment report i told no already yeah so if it comes lots of area forest area will go under water we we'll lose important breeding ground of elephants so we have got protected areas as i told you these protected areas has got different level of protection like national parks are having little higher level of protection and then wildlife sanctuaries community reserves tiger and elephant reserves are created to protect that that particular species but see it is not if you are protecting tiger or elephant it is not that you are protecting only that when you are protecting that uh, the entire food chain and ecosystem is going to get protected ramsar sites we have important bird areas biosphere reserve so these are all areas this is called as in situ conservation in situ means as such in natural habitat you are conserving them as such but that itself is not enough because sometimes some uh, animals are so uh, endangered that you like for example vulture okay so they have some artificial breeding centers or zoos or botanical gardens or gene pool areas or gene banks where all these plants and animals are conserved or breeding programs have been conducted in a enclosed area okay so ex situ conservation is not natural but that is also important so solutions again preserve natural capital restore damaged ecosystem by plantation programs and significantly expand protected area whatever are there also we are not we are conserving but if possible produce better like reduce your waste reduce your uh, resource utilization renewable production yeah these solutions are uh, from wwf report consume more wisely reduce your ecological footprint value nature account for social and environmental cost support and reward conservation equitable resource yesterday uh, he explained dr partha what is equitable resource governance make fair and ecological informed choices because so what do you understand by make fair and ecologically informed choices which are not damaging for the environment right which are not damaging environment for example if you know uh, certain products are eco friendly go for that certain industries or businesses are Uh, ethically responsible or eco friendly go for that this is somewhat like foreign concept people do business with the companies which are environmentally responsible so what will happen by doing that in a way you are supporting their responsible behavior suppose there are two companies okay and they are you know that this company is producing uh, products in an environmentally and ethically responsible manner ethically means what no child labor no social distancing and environmentally you know without damaging environment and second company is producing products by damaging environment suppose if you support a company what is going to happen in a way you are encouraging their responsible behavior but this is like this we are not worried about who is doing it, which is low price we will see or some brand name oh ye acha hota hai advertisement play a bigger role right either we go for brand or low price major success beyond gdp we already learned that we have to measure our performance based on ecology and environment many people have asked in feedback how to calculate happy planet index there is no need to calculate happy planet index uh, i just wanted to uh, give you idea that other than gdp there are indices calculated by different countries measured their happiness based on that indices it is uh bhutan yeah many other countries so gdp and richness is not equal to happiness that's what i wanted to tell you
be vigilant, avoid wildlife products. What will happen if you avoid wildlife products? Demand will decrease. Suppose if you are not buying ivory, what will they do? They will stop going and hunting or killing animals. Okay, this is report I was talking. Most importantly, what all we talk? At present, what is there in our capacity? Motivating our students. Yeah. So, form a nature club, conduct activities, at least motivate them, involve them. I, first day I told you that if you involve, they will learn in a better way. Yeah. So, involve them in different activities. So, this was the report uh, done by us involving students. We could record 114 species of birds in our campus. Usually when I used to go, I, have, I had not observed that many. But when we went for survey, we could see beautiful creatures just nearby our campus and which we had not noticed. So, all these visitors we have in our campus, we are very blessed. We conduct all this nature uh, club and plantation programs. We also conduct various competitions on poster making and photography competition, nature photography and debates and this was what we had conducted. I was telling that promoting cycle, use of cycle. We are very fortunate to have a very green and beautiful campus where actually I can take students. I don't have to really go to some sanctuary. I can take them around or universities surrounded by hills. We are located in Western Ghat. We are very lucky to have Chancellor, management, our inspiration, who is motivating us about nature, see what she says. So, usually you face problem, you know, you, you want to do so many things, but your management, your top management, your superiors are not supporting. But uh, we are very much motivated by Amma, so we feel very lucky and blessed to be part of that university.